I recently found a video of Jay Dyer, the famous or infamous Eastern Orthodox apologist, criticizing the apparitions of Our Lady of Fatima. So I thought it would be useful to look at this and I won't use the negative term or hostile term dissect it, but to examine some of the things he says just to see if they really are valid or not. So without further ado, let's get going. Bishops around the world will join Francis in the consecration of Ukraine to Russia. Pope will consecrate humanity, especially Russia and Ukraine to Mary, the text says. So there's been a couple of revisions of this. Uh, it's not sure where it's actually going to go. And the way that this works in the traditional Catholic world, for those that are not familiar, and I'm speaking from my years in trad Catholic world back in my 20s, the way this works is that basically this is like an ongoing soap opera. It's like an ongoing fairy tale uh, role playing thing that the Catholics participate in. And it's always ongoing. There's always, every time there's a, a failed consecration, there's an out by which they can say, oh, well, it doesn't count because he didn't do this, this, this. Okay. First question here, guys, come on. Okay. Why, why would the Pope not follow what Mary says to do? Okay. So the I think the important thing to notice there is he's talking about an ongoing soap opera and the consecration is done then the expected thing doesn't happen and we say ah oh, well you know we, certain conditions weren't followed well, actually that's a, a real misrepresentation I know afterwards he talks about why wouldn't they do it but that's another thing we can go into but firstly is his charge that we're moving the goalposts. A valid one. I say not at all. The conditions for Fatima have been long known. The conditions that Our Lady set down for bringing peace to the world have been long known. Whether the, every Pope since 1917, when the first apparitions of Mary occurred, have known them. It's doubtful whether Benedict the Fifteenth who was Pope from 1914 to 1922, whether he knew them. But nonetheless, the conditions are clear. And I'll set them out. So here's what, um, what Our Lady says. She's given a vision of hell to the children. The children named Lucia, Jacinta and Francesco. Now, Jacinta and Francesco die in the 1918 flu pandemic. Lucia is forewarned of this, and but she lives on till 2005, so it's said. There is an issue now about whether the lady, the nun, who is presented to us from, I think, 1967 as Lucia, was really Lucia, because there's such a change in physical features compared to the photos that we have from the 1930s and 1940s of this woman. But put that to one side, because the messages are what matter, and they were given at the time of, undoubtedly, the actual Lucia being around. So, Our Lady's given a vision to the Lucia and the other kids when they're little kids, shepherd children. And here's what she says. You've seen hell where the souls of poor sinners go. To save them, God wishes to establish in the world devotion to my immaculate heart. If what I say to you is done, many souls will be saved and there will be peace. The war, that is the First World War, because this is 1917 when Mary's speaking, is going to end. But if people do not cease offending God, a worse war will break out during the pontificate of Pius XI. Now, at this point, there's no Pius XI. 
it's Pope Benedict the Fifteenth. So there's a prophetic statement here of there's going to be a Pope called Pius XI. We don't know when he's going to be reigning, but when he reigns, that war will break out. And Mary goes on to say, When you see a knight illumined by an unknown light, know that this is the great sign given you by God, that he is about to punish the world for its crimes by means of war, famine and persecutions of the church and of the Holy Father. Well, there was a great aurora borealis in 1938, January, 25th to 26th of January 1938. And that, we can say, was the great sign because um, we have um, the Germany's attempts to reconstitute itself after the the um, the end of the First World War, when it was parts were broken off from it, and this precipitates conflicts. And in fact, that attempt to reconstitute itself as you know pre pre World War One Germany can be seen as acts of war in some ways, and we see that going on in 1938. And then, of course, the invasion of Poland, Britain declares war. And because it's the British Empire declaring war, we're now in a world war. Then Mary says, this can be prevented. All this need not happen. To prevent this, I shall come to ask for the consecration of Russia to my immaculate heart. And the communion of reparation on the first Saturdays. This is what we know as the first five Saturdays devotion. By the way, quite funny really. Apparently when Mary said she is going to ask for the consecration of Russia to her immaculate heart, they thought it was a woman in the village. And because it talks about Russia being, because Mary then goes on to talk about Russia being converted, it seemed this was a bad woman in the village they didn't know about. And she needs to be, otherwise there'll be all kinds of problems if she's not converted. It shows the parochial nature of their existence. Mary goes on. If my requests are heeded, Russia will be converted and there will be peace. If not, she will spread her errors throughout the world, causing wars and persecutions of the church. The good will be martyred. The Holy Father will have much to suffer. Various nations will be annihilated. In the end, my Immaculate Heart will triumph. The Holy Father will consecrate Russia to me, and she will be converted, and a period of peace will be granted to the world. I emphasise will there because we are not in a time when Russia has been converted. We're not in a time of a period of peace. In fact, we are hurtling towards a hot war with Russia, particularly. Um, and it seems that the prophetic nature of this apparition of well over 100 years ago now is beginning to work itself out inexorably. So that's the, um, the promise that Mary makes. Now, this, these are still kids. And as I said, the, the consecration to Russia, consecration of Russia to Mary's Immaculate Heart, Immaculate Heart is required. But the request for this isn't made at that point. We have to move forward 12 years. Now... Sister Lucia, well, now Lucia is Sister Lucia, a nun. And what she writes in her diary. It's, this, Fatima, in Lucia's own words. I want to get it without the, no, there, that's better. Basically, um, that woman at the front, Lucia, is the point of controversy at the moment because... She physically 
looks so different from, as I said, from the Lucia of the old photos. And the question is, did the original Lucia die and the church decided we need to have somebody who will continue the message, maybe somebody who knew Lucia intimately, knew the apparition intimately, and would carry on as if she was Lucia. It's all weird. But I just look at the face. If you if you go online, you'll see the faces of the young, young, young Lucia. And in fact, there's somebody who's done quite a bit of work on this to age the face of the young Lucia. Not the little girl, but the adult Lucia. And it doesn't seem to come out. This, the, the young Lucia is a Southern European kind of appearance. This lady is more North European. But anyway, that's a by the by, but a very, very interesting by the by. In here, we actually have Lucia's own words though, because the cover doesn't matter. The cover doesn't matter. Lucia wrote, The 13th of June, 1929. So as I say, 12 years later, Mary appears to the adult girl now, the adult woman. And initially, before Mary speaks, Lucia is blessed with a vision of the Holy Trinity. Jesus on the cross, the Father, from waist upwards above the cross, just on the top part of the cross to set against it and and the holy spirit across the father's chest and then blood dripping from the right side of jesus um and, and mary's heart mary holding her heart and then um there was mercy and um i think actually i'll because I'm, now i'm reciting i better get it right and uh, the word mercy and Grace are, are written. Um, here's what she says. Our lady then said to me, after this vision has been seen, the moment has come, and this is 13th of June, 1929. The moment has come in which God asks the Holy Father in union with all the bishops of the world to make the consecration of Russia to my immaculate heart, promising to save it by this means. There are so many souls whom the justice of God condemns for sins committed against me, that I have come to ask reparation. Sacrifice yourself for this intention and pray. So, the request wasn't made at any time until 13th of June, 1929. And the message was for the Pope. Not on his own, but in union with the bishops of the world to consecrate Russia to her immaculate heart. And Russia will be saved by this means. Now at this point, the Soviet Union was well established. But it had not yet really launched out. It had been pushed back, I think, at the Vistia by the Polish army. And so Western Europe was saved. There was a te there were attempted uprising, communist revolution in Hamburg um, uh, and in other parts of Eastern Europe. But they were suppressed. They were overthrown. It was only with the coming of the Second World War that we really see the power of communism develop with the aid of British and American material. One mustn't forget. And then everything breaks out from 1945. Communism takes over much of Europe, Eastern Europe, and spreads elsewhere in the world. So in 1929, the cancer is still contained, but it's only a few years before Hitler rises to power, 1933. And we then see a, a set of events set in train. So just four years from this point, Hitler will become Chancellor of Germany. Called to be perfectly legally, 
called to be by von Papen, um, Catholic um, head of government at the time. Not the head of state, head of state was Hindenburg. Now, if the Holy Father had acted, the history of Russia would have been different, but perhaps the history of Germany too. And there would have been no war because it was promised, as I read earlier, there'd be no war. Of course, this is not enough, of course. There had to be the, the um, five Saturdays, the acts of reparation by the Catholic people. Because this is the church itself acting in concert. But the work, but the call for the Holy Father and the bishops to be involved came in 29. We know that the war happened. The act of consecration did not happen. So the requirements of Mary are set out. J is wrong to say it's an ongoing soap opera where we, that different things are done and we then move the goalposts and say, oh, this condition wasn't met, that condition wasn't met. We know none of the conditions have been met. In fact, I have to say, you know, they actually have not been met. It's 2024. And we're on the brink of a hot war. And we've still not done it. I'll come to the consequences of that, which Jesus himself mentions uh, shortly. But for now, let's see what um, Jay still has to say. <laughs> 